Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mind Intelligence. Today, we have another episode of Land the Job. We're joined with my partner, Sam. Hi, everybody. And today, we have our really good friend, Wadi, here to tell us a bit about how he landed his internship in investment banking at National Bank. So, Wadi, can you give us a brief introduction and tell us what really you did last summer? It was, it was just a really, really standard process. Um, over the summer, I was part of TSIC. At that point, TSIC had this one event with National, I think around July, like late July. So we were meeting some alumni at, uh, at National and uh, there were a couple of us. So the, the, those alumni were usually director level associates and analysts, et cetera. I believe at some point the president of the bank also joined just for some, for, for some beer. So uh, I really backed that. Um, but it was like, a, it was like a really, really fun, fun sort of event. And from there, those event, that event is where I met the recruiter. I met the analysts and associates that I would be reaching out to. And from there, I just got their contact information, made sure that they sort of knew me by face at least. Um, and then hit them up later uh, just for copy chats. And from there, asked them who I should talk to further. And uh, sort of that's how sort of the network grew. Um, I didn't really over network per se. I think I put it at like three, four people at max. Like I talked to eight, like uh, about six or seven, but like the really was three or four coffee chats that really resonate. So pretty standard stuff. I sent in my resume, had to do this, there's this, the, the, the service that they have and like did all that fun stuff. And then um, it was actually kind of interesting because I never, I never received their interview initially. Uh, so when I saw that other people were getting it, I was like, Hey, I've done all my, all my, all my good stuff. Like I have some experience as a first year, like as much as you can, I know I'm competing with third year, third years, but like still might as well try. I hit up the recruiter and I was like, Hey, I have these job updates. Can, and I really love talking to the people over here. And I really enjoyed the culture, like really enjoy talking to them. And I really want to be part of the team. Uh, is there still a chance that you can sort of give me an interview? And I think that since I knew the recruiter already through coffee chats, she was really nice enough and she actually scheduled me in for an interview. From there, it was a pretty classic process. Uh, your first round interviews um, and then your second round interview, which is the super, super day. My first round was actually very technical focused um, and even my super day. Super days are known more to be behavioral or a mix. My super day was very technical focused and I think that I was solid on technicals because I prepped for them. So that sort of helped me there. And uh, I tried to squeeze in as many behaviors as I could whenever I got the chance or during the Q and A period as well. So when they're answering something, respond to them by telling them something about you as well. And when I was coffee chatting with the VP who I was interviewing me, he also said that we really liked the Q and A and like how you, like the information that you gave, that was a decision-making factor. So I think that that's always try to focus on your strengths in interviews. And if you, you're not getting asked about your strengths, try to slide them in a more implicit way rather than explicit way. So that's always a good thing. But I would say other than that, the recruiting process is pretty smooth and pretty, pretty normal. That is actually a great advice to be the leader within the interview process and actually guide the conversation so you can talk about your strengths, which is, I think, a great advice. Thank you, Woody, for that. Yeah. Um, I had a question about your coffee chats. How do you conduct a successful coffee chat with more senior executive people? Senior executive people, you, you don't necessarily want to talk about uh, stuff, for example, hey, what does a day to day look like for summer analysts? Like they've been with the firm like 10 or 12 years or even if not with the firm, they're 10 or 12 years senior than you. Like they'll know what summer interns do at a really high level, but you're not going to get the really actual good piece of information that you'll get from junior analysts or associates, right? Because they've been through that more recently. The senior people, you want to focus more on getting to know the industry, how they manage client relationships and all of that stuff. Like the really, like the actual revenue generating stuff. So that's where you want to focus on the senior bankers. And you also want to ask them for advice in succeeding in the industry. So don't ask them, hey, how do I become a successful summer intern? No, ask them like, how do I move forward in the industry? How does, how do the roles sort of change? How did you get here? What are the skills that you have picked up on the way? What do you think is the most important thing I should focus on if I break into the industry? How do I pivot myself to your position and stuff like that? Why did you choose this industry? Why do you work with these clients? Why not buy side and all that stuff. And like, like, well, why not consulting? Why did you still stay in banking and all of that stuff? So like ask them about their experience as much as you can and try to get as much information out of it because those advice, that advice that they give you, it will help you. Like you might not see it right now, but it will help you like four years down the road, three years down the road. And it actually helps you sound smarter in interviews as well. Awesome. That's some great advice. So bringing you back to the technicals, you mentioned that you had many technicals in both your initial interview and super day. Can you tell us about some of these technicals and if there were any in particular that really threw you off? Yeah, so I think that the, in my first round, there was a, they started off with some market-based questions. Like the first question I think I got was like, are you a gold buyer or a seller? 
And that was basically their implicit way of asking, do you think the market's tanking or going up in the near future? So that was, that's how it started off. And then it went to like some other accounting technicals, finance technicals. Since they saw the PE experience in my resume, they were like uh, asking some LBO stuff, but I was like, I was very forward with them. I was like, I haven't built anything yet. This is all that I'm going to do in the future. So I know some high level stuff, but uh, so they asked me about the high level stuff about LBOs and how they work. So they were pretty accommodating in that sense. And then from my first round, I remember the stock pitch because I hadn't prepped very well for my stock pitch. But for my stock pitch, they asked me, uh, like I pitched Adobe, I think. And uh, um, in, in that sense, I was like, it was, a, it was a decent pitch and everything like that. I didn't really know what the comps are. So they started asking me about the comps. I knew like on the top of my head, what kind of space Adobe operates in. But then one question that really stood out, which is something I learned for the first time, they were like, what are your secondary comps? I had no idea what a secondary comp is. And, uh, but then I later like found out like on the job and stuff like that, that, okay, that's what a secondary comp is. So I had no idea about that. So that's what stood out in my first round. And then in super day, I think there was this one question that they immediately asked. Like, I think this was the second question in the interview. They were like, we're meeting the CFO of Canadian Tire in one hour. Uh, what would you pitch to them? And what would that meeting entail? So that was really interesting question because basically what they were trying to ask is that, how good are you with pitch books? Like what, do, how do you talk to clients and all that stuff? And that's something that's more of an associate level thing rather than a intern, intern level thing, right? So I think my answer to that was uh, that, yeah, see like Canadian Tire right now operating, like I knew, I knew that they're operating in the retail space, like pretty diversified within that, like the products of the cell. So my answer was more tailored towards A, pitching qualifications of national as to why we're qualified to deal with Canadian Tire. So that includes your past deals, and I threw in keywords like tombstones and all that stuff. Like, just throw these things in and like, um, and for your slide deck. And then I was like, Canadian Tire right now, they could definitely inc- uh, have more presence in the e-commerce space. So maybe pitch them an acquisition of an e-commerce uh, e-commerce company. And I remember from my TSIC pitch that I did for my TSIC interview that ND acquired Etsy, I think, if I'm getting the companies right still, which was a... Uh, to, and their mattress sales actually jumped by 50% at that point. So I used that example. I was like acquiring an e-commerce company is actually smart in that sense. So you can sort of use that. So I think that was that was something that they really liked because as a, as a first or second year, that thing doesn't really, it's, you're not really expected to know this stuff, right? So like you just got to wing it. I think I just got lucky when winging it. Luck and definitely you're absolutely brilliant. So um, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, going off of what you said, what is secondary comps? I don't, I don't know what those are either. So, so for example, you'll have like, um, so if you're looking at a company, that company might have like 20 comparable companies that are really close to it. But out of those 20, you want to use like seven or eight that are really, really comparable. The other 12, you just put them in your secondary comps as sanity checks. Shifting gears a bit. Can we talk about a little bit more how you, um, I I know that you said they didn't really throw that many behavioral questions at you, but was there anything that really stuck with you and how did you actually pivot the conversation so that you could talk more about your behavioral side of things? I asked more about the culture of the firm and uh, like at national. So I was talking to the MD and there's a VP, so the MD of M&A and the VP of Diversified was there. So I was asking them because I know that from this LinkedIn, the MD had joined from CIBC about two or three years ago to national. And I was, I, I basically asked him like what the culture is, like, why did you transition and stuff like that? And I really liked his answer. His answer was that like, I joined in because like, we really, really have like a, his answer was around that we have a underdog kind of vibe. Like, even if we're not an underdog, we want to, we want to be an underdog. So have that sort of drive and like that kind of hobby hunt for deals and stuff like that. So that was one thing that I was like, okay, like that was pretty interesting to me. And then I slid in my experience in that I sort of, tried to vibe myself as being an underdog as well. Like, I don't remember what I said exactly, but I remember how I pivoted that. And it wasn't very long. I just threw in like two or three lines about my background. And that was like, that's how I sort of included some personality to my technicals, <laughs> technical answers as well. So I would say that try to look for the opportune moment or try to ask a question that can lead to an opportune moment. So obviously you had a bit more experience than most of us, maybe applying for investment making through your work at the PE uh, shop. However, what else did you do to prepare for these interviews? So one of my one of the alumni alumni definitely told me that technicals should be on your fingertips. Like you should always be prepped for technicals as though you have every day you have an interview tomorrow. And I think that's probably the best piece of like not the, like that's one of the best pieces of advice actually that I can I can give to anyone after networking. I would say to prep for interviews, mock interviews are extremely, extremely, extremely important. Before national, my national interview, I think I did around nine to 10 mock interviews. 
with different people and like usually operators and your operators are there to help you right so definitely do mock interviews there's probably the best thing that you can do and try to have a mock interviews based on everything like behaviorals technicals market based anything and i would say that other than that i really focused on learning what deals the company has worked on as well cuz you're not really asked that question at times but you can be and it's honestly good to know which company like it's so good to know what company what deals your company has worked on if you're going to work for them anyways so i think i spent about two days researching for my national interview mm-hmm. what what are the deals that national worked on so i would say that's pretty important but mock interviews all the way 100% would recommend okay amazing thank you so much buddy and finally one piece of advice for somebody who's recruiting for iv yeah i'll give the same advice that i gave in the previous video which is honestly just keep networking don't network just to get a job network to actually learn what people do and what the industry is like because even you're looking at it from the outside right now you're not an insider when you're trying to break in but on the inside is very different so try to get as much information out as you can and try to learn about the bank as much as you can learn what databases they use learn what internal things they have and stuff like that because when you drop those in interviews it really shows that you've done your research and stuff like that for example if you go to interview at national and they're like hey where do we get like these equity research reports and you can say oh either thompson capital like you or i can check out national zone on, on nbf coverage like that's an insider info kind of thing right so like you can like the, know stuff like that for the bank know the people there know the seniors try to network as much as you can and always be prep for your technicals especially if you're applying to globals technicals are very focused on like globals actually do like a very strong mix of behaviorals with strong technicals so i would 100% say that uh have those ready networking and technicals other than that keep your grades up keep your extra quick activities going thank you so 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 much buddy for all of this wonderful advice and for sitting with us today and giving us such great insight into your career and we know that you're going to do amazing in the future so um we're really looking forward to catching up with you in a few years um cat and i definitely learned a lot and i hope you guys did as well if you haven't checked out woody's day in the life make sure you do because it was an amazing video and we'll catch you guys next time bye